Hello everyone, this is my presentation on how to create or at least point you in the right, right direction. I'm not going to tell you exactly how to create a select response test, but I am going to give you some guidelines in this presentation. Um, the second step is to identify your learning targets. Now these are objectives. Um, you will see um, I will go into the exemplar. I believe I have an exemplar here ready to go. And you can see this person has four learning targets. Remember you have to have four or five. Um, and and this, this was done by a Success Academy student. So they call each other colleagues and they call the student scholars. Um, interesting. Um, so this person said col colleagues will know what they need to do to plan for the learning segment of the EdTPA. This is a pretty general learning target. Um, when I look for lesson plans, I expect it to be more specific than this. Um, colleagues will know the five steps or the four steps or the three steps that they need to, uh, to do to plan for the learning set, the four steps of planning. So make it spe more specific in this. This is, this is general. Okay, so these are your learning targets. You have to go through the EdTPA and you have to figure out what you're going to assess your students on. So, you, and then you're going to um, organize your test by those targets, or I'll, I'll talk about another way you can organize it um, also. So you have to identify them, and you'll, you also notice that they were weighted. Um, if you look at this, you'll see that um, she, she, this person weighted it by the number of questions um, and if you have 20 questions and you have, this person had six questions, those questions, um, this would, she did two points a piece. Um, I don't know why she did that. Her, she only did 20 questions. So that would only be 40 points. Um, of course, you can do that. Um, I know Chapaway and Stiggins et al., they suggest that you only use raw scores. Um, and that's the way you can compare them um, better. But uh, in our case, we're going to do a percentage, and you're going to have 100%. Um, so if you have 20 questions, each one is worth 5 points. So 6 questions would be 30 points. So keep that in mind. So you're going to weight each target uh, based on how, how important you feel it is. And that, that makes a lot of sense because... You don't want to have five, question, four, five questions on each of the four targets if you think one is more important. I think the planning stage is much more important, so I'm going to have six or seven questions on that. Um, so that's something you have to keep in mind. What, which one is more important? Then you're going to create a test blueprint. We're going to do a, you're going to do a very simple one uh, in Chapter 5 in Chapaway et al. They, they have a couple of uh, blueprints. Um, and on the next slide, I have a very simple one. Um, you have the learning target on the left, number of points on the right. All right? Um, and then you're going to write the test items, develop an answer key, field test the items. Now you're going to field test them by giving them to your colleagues. You're going to upload them into a discussion board, which I will grade as pass-fail. You upload a test, you get 100. <laughs> Uh, and that's it. Then there will be a second discussion board the following week, actually two weeks because I'm giving you two weeks to create your test, um, where you will um, upload your answers to, to it and your suggestions for improvement. All of you are going to take three, um, you're in groups of four, you're going to take three tests, um, you're going to upload each one of them, uh, into a separate thread with your comments on how to improve, and I'll talk about that a little later. All right. So if you field test your, most of you won't get a chance to field test your um, your items because you're a teacher, <laughs> um, but in this case you are. Um, and then you're then as a final assignment, and I will talk about that later in the course. You're going to do an analysis of the test. It's going to be a three part analysis. Um, part of it is going to be anal ana analyzing the tests and what you would have you would have had to reteach 
and why you feel you need to reteach that uh, or that they didn't get it right because the items were poorly written. Um, and I will talk about that um, uh, later on in the course. Um, that's going to be towards the end of the semester that you will upload that document uh, and that analyzing um, the, your test results and the process, you know, talking about what you learned about creating uh, tests and also what you learned about the EdTPA. Um, so, and of course, revising and editing. You're going to revise and edit yours after you, your colleagues, your classmates take it for the first time and then give you um, suggestions for improvement. All right. So this is the, the blueprint I mentioned already. You have your learning targets on the left. And in your case, you're going to have um, 20 to 25 questions. So um, I said here four to five questions um, for, per target. But again, that depends on how much weight you want to give. You don't have to have four questions per target if you have five targets. You don't have to have five questions per target if you have four targets. Um, that can vary, and I, I think it should vary based on what you think is important. All right. Um, um, now, writing quality um, items, there's a lot of different criteria and rules for them. Um, here are some of them. Keep wording simple and focused. Ask a full question in the STEM. Eliminate clues. Um, that's, you know, using A or AN, and then there's words beginning with consonants and words beginning with vowels. Um, take, take out any excessive wording. Um, make all four, if you're doing a multiple choice, make all the alternatives plausible. If you're doing a matching, then they all should be similar items that you're matching. Um, of course, don't make the answer obvious. Um, highlight critical words like not. Um, they recommend that you try to stay away from negatives, but sometimes it's okay. Um, and um, best choice, um, those are all critical words. You should highlight them. And then in the case of a teacher, have your friend uh, or colleague, your teacher next door, your fellow math teacher, fellow reading teacher, read it for bias or read it for errors or just like you're doing with each other right now. You're, you're reading it and you're giving feedback to your colleagues. Um, I also have a checklist um, which you will use when you're um, going over it. Uh, it's in course materials. Um, you can see that there are guidelines for fill-ins. You can see that um, formatting issues, I'm going to talk about some formatting issues right now. I'm going to go over this exemplar test and talk about some formatting issues. The last, this is the last thing I'm going to talk about. You can see when you do a multiple choice test, you need to use the, in, in Microsoft Word, you, used it, you need to use the numbering session here. Now you got to play with it because once you start doing numbering, it'll number every paragraph. So you're going to have to, go, when you start doing your stems, you're going to have to change it to letters. Um, notice how this is a hanging indent right here, that the number is separate, it's out and then everything else is in line. You notice the choices are in line with the hanging indent. You have to play with, one of the things I do is this um, bar up here. Um, I think where you, it says um, view, if you go to view on Microsoft Word, you have to click on ruler and you can then you can use this ruler to play with the margins, all right? And that's, that's important when you're creating um, these tests. One of the things that you also need to do, you notice that this question here is on two pages. You don't, you shouldn't do that. Um, put the cursor in front of the question, go to insert and insert um, page break. And you can, you'll see, it'll put it on a different page. Okay, so you got a big space here. Wait a minute, put it on way too many pages. Um, I'm going to go delete and it'll bring it back up. All right, so that's how you... Um, that's one of the rules. You have to have all your questions on one page, all of the question on one page. So um, you can see here there's directions for true-false. You need to have a true or a false. I prefer them at the end. 
Um, and I would say for questions, circle either true or false. It's simple, simple directions. Your directions need to be clear. Um, like in, in uh, multiple choice, it should say um, for questions one through three, circle the best answer. Notice best is capitalized. Circle the best answer. So it doesn't necessarily be the only answer, but it's the best one. All right. Um, when you do matching, notice that the matching, um, I like to, I think Chapway and Stiggins et al., they say have your short version on the right side. Um, I like to put the short ones on the left side because then you can put your answer blanks here. So you put the answer and then you tab, I would use tab, and then make your blanks. All right. Now the, there's a tricky part to making um, these two columns like this. Um, and I really am not going to go into it right now. You know, I should go into it right now. What you need to do is start, put your cursor where your matching is going to start, go into page layout, go into columns. You can see there's columns right here. And, and don't click on two, go down to where it says more columns. Now you, you highlight two and then you go this point forward, right? And then okay. That'll create two columns for everything after that. Well, if you're just starting, there's only going to be your, your matching. So you've got a couple questions above and nothing below. So when you get to, when you get to the end of your, your matching, all right, you go back into columns, uh, columns, more columns. Now you click one, and then you click from this point forward again. So then it will only have two columns for that section. So this section, you, see, you can see that everything else is one column. All right? So that's how you create matching, and that's how I would recommend doing it, formatting it. Again, true-false, um, you need to have the true-false afterwards, and then directions to circle it. All right, so if you organize, you can see that this person organized their test by the, t the tasks or by the learning targets, and that's the way I would recommend it. Why do we do this? It's so you can look and see this person mastered task one but didn't master task two. Um, if you're just making random questions throughout your, your quiz, it's going to be very difficult for you to know what the, your colleague mastered. So um, that's... Uh, basically what I'm expecting um, there is this is this a quick question this is in your course materials for the as you can see I'm editing this video because I have changed the rubric I've added some categories to it so it's it's a little different than when I first made the test creation video um, if you are looking for rubrics, they, I have a link to the left over here where it says all grading rubrics, and that's where I am right now. Um, so let me just briefly go over it. I'll go over the advanced category because I know you all want an A+. Um, uh, as far as organization goes, your targets have to be stated. They have to be clear. They have to be focused, and they have to be listed at the beginning of your test. Um, I, don't, I think everyone should get a four on that. Um, item quality. The test is organized to easily determine mastery of the targets. In other words, I can look at your test, and I can say this question definitely assesses that target. Now, if you're just having targets and then writing any old questions, then you're going to lose credit in this area. Um, also, your test needs to be organized, either one, by learning targets, okay, which is not the method I prefer, but that's okay, uh, or two, uh, by the item type. Now, if you organize by item type, like these are all my multiple choice questions, and then you code them, uh, to me, that's a much stronger way, because now you know it's the content that the student is struggling with, rather than the question type. So there may be a student that has trouble with true-false or a student who has trouble with fill in the blanks. You won't know that if you only assess one question 
one learning target with one type of question. All right, let's go down to question type. This is the one where most people lose credit. There's a mix of reasoning and knowledge questions. Reasoning questions are difficult to, to write, but if you look on page 139 of Chapui et al., you will see uh, examples of reasoning questions. I also ha There's also some great uh, examples of reasoning questions in the exemplars that I have posted. Um, formatting. Uh, questions are aligned in hanging indent. I've already had, I've corrected uh, many selective response tests that do not use hanging indents. You have to use hanging indents. And the easiest way to do that is to use the number function in the home menu. To, for your questions, you number them. For your answers, you letter them in uh, capital letters, A, B, C, D, or E, if you have um, Matching have to be aligned in two-column format. Uh, some of you will try to get away with not doing that, and you'll lose points in this area. And your spelling and grammar must be correct, of course. Um, as far as mechanics, that you have to have at least 20 questions. Uh, you have to have six matching. You can have more if you want. Um, and you can break that up into two sections of three, a section of four and three. Um, but just remember that you should always have one more answer choice than you have questions in the left-hand column. Um, you, you, you have to have three, three questions, at least three questions of the remaining types. Fill in, true, false, multiple choice. Um, in item quality, multiple choice. One, you have to ask a question. You can't have a statement with a blank. Um, you have to ask a question. And they're e these are easy to rewrite to make them questions. Um, you have to have hanging indents in the questions and the answers. Um, the correct answer can't be obvious. Uh, and you have to avoid using all of the above. So I don't want to see all of the above uh, because that makes it easier to, to guess. If one of them isn't right, then all of the above you can eliminate. Uh, item quality for fill-ins. Fill Answer blanks have to be at or near the end of the sentence. Uh, many of you have, uh, will start out writing them all over the, the sentence. Leave it at the end or near the end. Um, all your answer blanks have to be of the same length. Uh, answers have to be one word. If they're not one word, make them, if your answer has two words to it, or, or if you have a two-word answer, you can just make two blanks. But if you have more than one word, you have to make those separate numbered questions. So you would have, you'd write the question without a number and then put 13 blank, 14 blank, uh, if you want two separate answers. Um, uh, and there's no word bank. <laughs> uh, every semester, uh, someone's trying to add a word bank to the fill in the blank questions. That's just a glorified multiple choice. Uh, matching. Matching section is arranged in, in two columns. Hanging indents are present in both the left hand and right hand column. There's at least one more answer choice than questions to avoid uh, process of elimination. And there are answer blanks that are present on the left hand column that are all aligned and are all the same length. And finally, for the uh, true-false, the word true and false is written out. Um, rather than having a blank space and the, and the person has to write the tr T or the F or the true or the false, write the words out and have them circle it. And again, the answers can't be obvious. The question is a statement. It's a proposition. So uh, that's it um, for the rubric. Uh, uh, Make sure you look at it as you're writing your test and after you've finished. And that's it for this part of this presentation. Um, you got uh, two chances to do it. You have two chances to do it before you upload it. So it's a formative assessment kind of exercise. You're going to get feedback from your classmates on how to make it better. And that's why it's so important that you do a good job for each other because you're, you know, it, in a way, um, your feedback is going to help your classmates um, get an A+. And my goal is that everyone gets an A+.